Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett and today I'm back with the sharpening jig that we made the other day but more than that today I'm here to show you one of the methods of sharpening chisels and plane blades. Before you start on any sharpening what you need is a nice flat surface. Now if you're using a grinding stone or a wet stone, uh, which I don't have here, um, they, they should be flat to begin with. If it's used, then you're going to need to make sure that it's flat. But for what we're going to do right now, I'm using this plate glass. This is actually tempered glass. Uh, I picked this up used from, uh, I think it was a Habitat store. You could also use granite. This is flat ground granite, granite and it works just fine. You could also, I've also seen people use MD the thing I don't like about MDF is it can tend to wear uh, and when you're using water with it it's not the best material so I like glass it works really well uh, but anything that's flat is going to work. The next thing you're going to need is a variety of grits and I have 220, uh, I have some 320 here and it goes up to 600, 1200, and it even goes higher. There's even up to, I think this is uh, 5000, and I think there's even some 8000 here somewhere. But there's all sorts of different grits, and I get asked all the time, what grits do you use when you're sharpening? And it's impossible to answer that question because it depends on what you're sharpening how sharp you want it and what condition it is when you get started. I usually like to try and end up with about a three or a five thousand grit but I might start off with a 220 or a 320. If it's already sharp I might start with a 600 or an 800 so it, it varies all over the place on what you would start with. What I'm using today is this plate glass and this material, you can get some material that's already a sticky back on it. Uh, most of the material I end up getting is not. So I just use a spray adhesive and I spray the back of it, let it sit for a, a minute or so and then just push it on and press it on and it works just fine. When it gets worn down you just peel it off and put another plate. And I like to have at least two plates because I will have different grits on here and I don't have anything on these at the moment. This plain blade that I'm going to be using today uh, is one that I replaced. I just didn't like the quality of this blade. I wanted a little bit thicker blade, a little bit better quality blade. But this one will do great for showing you what to do. Now the very first thing we do with any blade, whether it's a chisel or a plain blade, is we want to check to make sure that it's square. And this one is pretty good. In fact, this one is actually a little bit rounded and that's what you want the plane to be in an ideal condition. If it's straight across, that'll be fine. But if it's a little bit rounded like this one is, that's even better. So it, this one is, is square enough to work with. The next thing that we want to see is we want to make sure that the back of the blade is flat. Now the reason we want to make sure that the blade is flat is so that we get a square push like that and you can see how square that is. It's a nice, I'm just using a bit of sawdust here to give, show you an example. Now when it's not, and I'm exaggerating this, but when the blade is concave, watch what happens. This is what happens, you get a line in the middle or it could be the other way around. Uh, it could be, you know, a line going like that. If you look closely, you'll be able to see that this plane blade, I've actually started to do some work on it and this is one of the reasons I replace it is because it is warped. So the first thing you can do, and you probably can't see, or maybe you can, um, this blade is warped like this. It's concave like this and it's it's quite a bit. You can see that just with the rule on there. The other thing that you can do, this these markers are your, they're going to be your favorite tool for sharpening because they're going to tell you the state of many things. So if I take that now and run that blade flat even just against that and when I flip that over, look at that, you can see exactly what is flat so you can see there's ink marks on either side and that this blade is not flat. Now I'm not going to bother gluing this down 
but I am going to put a little bit of moisture on there, just a little bit of water. And what that does is it keeps the iron filings from uh, sticking into the um, into this grit here and it allows me to keep on. Now typically what I would do is I would just keep working with this 320 until I have no material left on either side. I'm not going to do that today because this is just an old replacement blade but I'm doing it so that you see exactly how you start. The first thing you need to do with any jig that you're using is make sure that you're even. You don't want the the blade to be offset and part of it up or down. You can see how that's up or down. Um, try and get it as close to the center as you can and just lightly tighten each side so that you can still move the blade around in there um, but that it's a little bit, just a little bit snug. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use our alignment jig that we made and we're, we're, remember we've got the bevel at the bottom because that's where we're going to be taking the um, steel off and what I'm going to do now is set this into the V and the V is at right angles and the next thing I'm just going to loosen this just a little bit and ride this whole bit over to the fence, this fence here, because I want to make sure that it's aligned to the fence. Then I'm butting it up to, and I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure on there, up to the block here. So it's up here, it's aligned along here and along the front, and that should give us a perfect, a perfect alignment. And now I want to double check to make sure that we're equally aligned there. That looks good. Now because this blade, it actually needs quite a, bit, quite a bit of work, I'm going to start off with this 320 grit, which normally I wouldn't. I would usually start off more at 600 or 800 because it would be in much better shape than this blade. But remember how I told you that this, these little felt pens are your best tool. What I'm going to do now is just mark all the way down that blade and I'm going to do just a, some rough some rough sanding here to see what that's going to look like. And all we do is we lay it on the glass and then down onto our sandpaper or our grit and just do it in little, move it in little circles like that and just do that for a few minutes and then we can flip it over and we can see what's left. And if we do it gently and take the water off there, you can actually see where we've started to grind. And we haven't even come close to the bottom yet, so we have quite a bit of grinding to do on this yet because this blade, but we're pretty even all the way across, so that's really good, that's what we wanted. Uh, and I'm just going to keep on grinding on this for a few minutes and see if we can get that down. Now I'm making a little bit of progress and you can tell that because if I put, I dried this off and put a little bit more of this uh, felt pen on there and, and I do a little bit more grinding and you're going to be able to see what that's starting to look like now. And I should have told you, you want to make sure that you get even pressure on both sides of this so that you're not you know, sort of twisting it, and that will help to make sure that you're getting a good grind. Now you can see that there's not much, still a little bit to go there. Now what I would typically do, and I'm not going to do that here because you've seen what we do, basically what I would do is I would keep grinding with this until I have, what I'm really concerned about is making sure that I get this felt pen right at the bottom here. I want that to be, dis I want that to disappear. And when that disappears, that's, that's the very first time that I change to a, a lighter grit. So I would go, in this case, from 320, I would go to 600 for a while, then to 800, and then to 1200 and see what it's like. And at that point, you're, the, the, you're going to notice that the steel starts to polish. It, you can look at it now, it looks a little bit dull, but if you look at a finely polished, you can see a little bit on this side. See how it 
almost looks like it's mirror-like. The finer the grit you get, you're going to get more of a mirror-like finish. And when you get the mirror-like finish on the, the very bottom of that blade, that's when you're almost done, but there's one final step. And that final step is to take the blade out of your jig, and that's assuming that you've sharpened it on here, you've, pol you've sharpened it so much that you've actually polished it. But now, if you actually touch the blade with your fingers, you'll find that there's, and I can even feel on this one, there's a little bit of a, uh, an edge. It's a little bit rough on here. So what you want to do as, a, as the final grind on your uh, finest uh, grit that you have is make sure that you lie that plane, lay that plane, plain, can't say it today, plane blade, I'm having trouble with that, lay it absolutely flat and just take the very back of that little bit of roughness on the back and you'll again you'll get that polish on there and you can see that polish uh, you can see how that polish is on there and what that does is it takes that and I can actually feel that now uh, it takes that little bit of a ridge off of there and that plane blade then is absolutely razor sharp and that is all it takes to sharpen either a chisel or a plain blade. Well, and that's just how easy it is to sharpen plain blades and chisels. Uh, and you know, when I first learned how to do this, uh, <laughs> it just took away all the mystery to it. And uh, now all of my plain blades are super sharp. I don't need to worry about that they get really dull because uh, I just touch them up every now and again and uh, they all just stay super sharp. It's, it's, it's a very easy chore now once you get them all to that state. So. I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. I hope that helped.